What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Beat Dan. I'm back with more Doki Doki Literature Club. Last time, um, yeah, what happened last time? Oh yeah, we uh, we made a poem, and we hung out with uh, Natsuki, who apparently likes manga. And now we're sharing our poems. We already showed Natsuki ours, so let's show Sayori. <clears throat> this is a good poem, Jack. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? I don't know, I could be. I guess you're right. But that's why it's imp why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Ooh. Well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Jack. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. Oh, God, my throat. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. All right. I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. I'm hungry now. <laughs> Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. J just a bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. <laughs> Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how I sh how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Especially that last line. <laughs> <laughs> I made eggs and toast. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't keep the voice together while I was doing that. <laughs> I don't know why it, it makes me really giggle the thought of the thought of I want breakfast. Yeah, that sounds like you. I made breakfast. <laughs> uh, even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Alright, I guess... Yuri next? Why not? Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh. S sorry I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not... I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. 
Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. So it's bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Um, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. Might take Yuri a while to get used to uh, new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. I suppose that's a way to look at it. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor, d demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um... Well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Nats uh, Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost Under the Light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining sh 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 streetlight. Gotta hate cursive so fucking much. To have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future, I bathe. God. Is that supposed to be calmly? Calmly breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. It's not that you have terrible handwriting, I've just never been good at reading cursive. I fucking hate cursive. Like, the moment my teacher said I didn't have to fucking do that, I jumped on it. I hate that fucking thing. I know how to sign my name and everything, but god, I hate writing it, and I hate trying to read it. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Jack. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. 
lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Oh, no, that was her. I'm counting on you. Whatever. And I guess Monica's the last one. Hi, Jack. Having a good time so far? Yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring the things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Jack. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's the it's that sort of barrier that we're all that that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like it, Jack. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shale Silverstein? Eh. Maybe a long time ago? He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would only that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler, uh, filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the key of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you, wants you to write. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Sure. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? It, don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been it couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. I got this one's long enough that I need a scroll bar for it. So, what do you think? It's very... freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. 
what was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a dark, a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks, I guess. Oh, phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. I was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monika are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. <laughs> What's with this language? Uh -huh. Um, did you say something? Yeah. Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki, uh, Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Yeah. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Oh, this isn't gonna end well. Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Jack did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Yeah. And Jack liked my poem, too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Ladies, please don't drag me into this. <laughs> I'm gonna get dragged into this. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Huh? That's not what I... Uh... Y you... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Jack appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Okay. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? And you're j Are you ju uh, Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Well. That escalated quickly. Uh. Um. Is everyone okay? <laughs> well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Jack started showing up. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little... <laughs> this doesn't involve you. 
I, I don't like the fighting guys. Suddenly both girls turn towards me as if they've just noticed I was standing there. Jack, she she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this would have never this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain to her, Jack. W wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Jack? Um... Well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Uh, 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 um. Sayori saved me. <laughs> Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turned to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! <laughs> eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Jack. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Uh, I agree. It's unfair to, for others to interject their own feelings onto our conflict. Yeah, unless say Yuri wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that made her that's made her upset in the first place. Great. <sighs> Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why <laughs> exactly why nobody likes. Stop! Natsuki, Yuri. You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yori's poems are amazing because they point, yeah. paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? B because... Well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. I'm glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> Big and beautiful. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monika stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. <laughs> so this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monika. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see herself to see her get. Ugh. I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. 
Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Jack, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. A nod to myself with newfound determination. Jack! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. <clears throat> it truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? N no, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Jack, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Well... Or, not well. We'll just see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, back to more writing. Which, uh... Whoops. No, I want to fuck up my headphones. There we go. Which, uh, we're gonna save right here. There we go. And next time, we get to write another poem. For whom? Well, I don't know yet. We'll find out. So until then, I'll catch you all later. Asta.